<laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome, everybody. It's Clear Vision Wednesday time. I'm super excited about today's topic, which is a continuation of last week's session with Madison King, which was in our series of grounding, um, grounding especially our feet. So she gave us some really great energy medicine modalities to help ground ourselves, including uh, massaging the feet or you know using the energy meridians in the feet and in the head and the chest. We had like a lot of different things and. I posted the, I emailed the, the link to her blog article. So if you don't know me, I'm Claudia Mühlenweg. I'm the creator of a natural clear vision method. I'm also trained in yoga and the role model method. And we will be using some of these things today. Um, so today will be both educational and we will experience some kind of foot massage and strengthening today at the end. So I have a little slideshow prepared. Let me see that I can connect all of this properly um let me share my screen so now you you actually see my youtube here okay so you should all see my clear visual club slide and maybe my team can let me know that it's all there that you can see this you look good awesome okay so let's play this little presentation that i have created so the topic is barefoot vision how your footwear and care affects your vision and as usual, medical disclaimer, I'm not, you know, intending to replace traditional vision care or regular checkups at an eye doctor's office, and this is not medical advice. So this is really for educational purposes. So, so just in case you don't have these things or you're watching the replay, for the foot massage at the end, you will either need my favorite massage balls called yoga tune-up balls or a tennis, tennis balls will also do. So if you don't have those balls, you can use a tennis ball or any maybe lacrosse ball or something like that. Um, and we will also do something at the end, something fun, we will pick up little items with our feet. So, you know, little balls, some pebbles, some rocks or some shells or whatever, you know, I, you see I have some Lego, some really thin Lego brick there. So all of these kind of whatever you have laying around that's small enough that you can pick it up with your feet. All right, so balance. What contributes to good balance, right? We sometimes say, oh, I'm bad at balancing or I can't balance well. Balance is a rather complex task that we kind of take for granted until we feel off balance. Our bodies use three main systems to keep us upright and to also move us safely through space on our two legs. Or if you do handstands, in that case, it would be the, the hands and the arms doing that work, right? The three systems working as a team are the vestibular system in the inner ear, the visual system, and the so-called proprioceptive system, which is a combination of our body movement and our sensory and muscle systems. So how do our eyes impact our sense of balance? The vestibular system and the visual system work together by sending signals from the eyes to the balance organs in the inner ear. And when you turn your head, there's actually a reflex, and I will describe this. When you turn your head, your eyes go in the opposite direction. This is called the vestibular ocular reflex. Unless, right, you're moving your attention to a specific object, which is what we usually do in life. If you're just moving your head to look at something, obviously then your eyes don't go in the opposite direction. So, but if you are in this kind of, balancing situation or if it's it's a natural reflex to keep us safe basically uh, your eyes go in the opposite direction than your head to just kind of keep you like imagine turning your head to the side but you're still or having your middle finger or index finger in front of you and you turn your head to the left but your eyes still look at the finger that's something that would we usually do to know that we're not losing our balance and this is the resource for this is called research gate but this is something that doctors test. It's called the vestibular ocular reflex. And usually what you want in that reflex is that on the top slide there, when you turn your head, you still want to look at that, that fixation point. But again, this is a safety mechanism. This is not how we want to use our eyes in daily life. But this is what helps us to prevent falls. And that's why it's a reflex. And if that reflex is not working right, there will be problems with balance for sure. But this is not what we are... We're not going to look at this reflex so much, but how our feet can actually help us feel grounded. And if you question the eye's involvement in balance, have you ever done any balancing and closed your eyes like this kind of yoga pose? 
right? We immediately, even if we do tree pose or stand on one leg, like the second we close our eyes, it's way, way harder to keep that balance because again, our eyes have that level of the horizon that can kind of let us know where we are in space. So how do our feet, how do our feet impact our sense of balance? In addition to the vestibular system, signals from our muscles in the neck, not just in the, in the neck, you know, the eyes obviously, but also in the legs, the ankles, the knees, and the feet help us keep our balance. And you can simply think of your feet are the foundation, right? Especially when we're standing, right? When we, of course, again, handstand, in that case, your, your hands would be the foundation, but our feet are our foundation. So what do you think contributes to a good foundation? And I'm not talking necessarily about a house, which can also apply, obviously. So maybe ponder that a little bit or think about what contributes to a good, solid foundation. You've probably heard this analogy before, but to me, a good foundation is like bamboo. You have deep and wide roots. This is where the grounding practices come in. Of course, we don't have actual roots. Our feet don't have roots. However, we have that. We feel really connected to the ground. We feel really solid on the ground. We have strong feet and we have flexible feet, right? Just like bamboo, it can move. And even when you look at earthquakes, I live in Los Angeles. So when they looked at, you know, earthquakes, the, the, the worst earthquakes or damage happened in areas where there was no strength in the, in the foundation, where there was no strength and it was just like really soft and wobbly, like at the beach or something. So this is a, a, a woman I've been following for a long time. I absolutely love her and I will show a lot of her pictures. Anyasreviews.com is the website. It's a, with a Y. She actually helped me understand a lot of things. She has great resources. So this is Anya showing her own feet in January 2019 and then in August 21. And you can see how her foot or her feet got wider, how her toes are less squished, how there's more space between the toes. And um, you can read her whole story, by the way, on her blog, but she had orthotics since age nine. She had foot pain. She was in supportive shoes that were stiff and it got, got worse and worse and worse. And eventually, eventually the pain was so bad from all these foot what do you call those doctors? The foot doctors, podiatrists, I think, that she went on her own journey. And actually, so that's a really great resource. Um, and obviously, we talk, this is called barefoot vision. So barefoot is really the, the best way to feel grounded and, you know, to feel the earth underneath you. But most of the day, we don't really run around barefoot, right? I mean, that's something I encourage you to do. But, you know, especially in winter, you might not be able to run around barefoot. So let's talk about shoes. And this example here, it's running shoes. So to me, it's like glasses. I have that same, how, have, you know, when I talk about glasses, how have we accepted a, a treatment that makes our vision worse and makes us dependent that we pay a lot of money for? And shoes, same thing. How have we accepted shoes that squish our toes, limit our foot movement, create bunions, create pain and plantar fasciitis, Achilles issues, knee problems, and hip problems. And they put more strain on our visual and vestibular systems because we have a crappy foundation. And obviously it depends on the shoes you're wearing, right? These athletic shoes might not be as bad as, right? I mean, high heels, how have we ever accepted high heels? And especially as women usually are the ones wearing these, right? And you can see the mom in that picture, she has a bunion there, right? That bunion is not something that happens just because you get older, but these squishy um, uh, shoes really affect that. And, you know, I put in that good luck with balance, baby, but it's like, if you've ever tried to walk on high heels compared to barefoot, you know, this is not easy. Traditional shoes really fail us. And this is again from Anya's reviews, this picture. So she shows her feet even before she really spreads her toe, but how basically most shoes have that the longest or the, the, the mountain of the shoe is kind of in the middle when in fact for most of us, the big toe or the second toe are the, the biggest toes, right? So that design really doesn't make sense. So, um, and here's the heel issue. This is just a picture from my website too. It's a little tiny heel, but you know, when you think of our body as a skyscraper or, or, you know, like that's what I like to think, a skyscraper, right? We are upright, we're pretty tall. 
And when you have high heels on, or even these little heels, you kind of turn into the leaning power tower of Pisa, and you have to basically counterbalance that. And that creates a forward thrust in the hip and knees. And we're not going to get into all the, the um, anatomical issues here. I'm going to invite another guest to this show to talk more about that whole, how it affects the rest of our body. But it makes total sense, right? When we are flat on the ground, we have much more control. We are much more grounded than being on a raised heel. And another thing that I believe was like arch support. Oh my God, we need to support our arches. You have pronation. You go to these places like Foot Locker or one of those stores and they and they measure your feet and they say, you have pronation or you have supination and you need, you need arch support and you need this and you need that. But here's the thing. When you have in the right, right, the Birkenstocks are shoes I used to wear religiously, but with all that arch support, the shoe is doing the work, just like when you wear glasses, the glasses are just creating this clear vision, but you actually create weaker feet with glasses, you create weaker eyes. You basically ruin your inability, uh, your ability to actually walk properly and use your feet and much like with glasses, your eyes. So when you wear the proper shoes, you are actually learning to strengthen your foot muscles and you don't need any arch support. And again, I want to say this is not medical advice. If you ever start on the journey, you need to go slow. This is not something, it's not like where I say, throw your glasses away. Don't throw all your shoes away and just start walking barefoot because that is something that might lead to problems. So you have to do these things slowly, carefully, and with good guidance. And again, from Anya's review, she shows how people have different feet, right? We like the mountain shape is probably the closest to traditional shoes. But most of our feet don't look like, you know, the, the shoes that we usually buy. And here, this, this picture goes hand in hand with this one. Even if you look at so-called minimal shoes, which I've gotten into, I don't wear traditional shoes anymore. They're often called minimal shoes or barefoot shoes. And they have gone a far journey from those toe shoes, right? Remember those, those I always thought, oh my God, that's so creepy. It might be... <laughs> might be healthy, but I'm not going to wear those shoes. Nowadays, you have amazing styles and barefoot shoes. I mean, it's way, it's like, what else can I compare this to? But we have such a selection and her website is a really great place to, to find a really great selection um, of barefoot shoes or minimal shoes. Or they, they have all kinds of different names, but there's probably like 50 brands or if not more out there nowadays. And literally for all kinds of foot shapes and for all styles, um, I'm going to show you some of the shoes that I have. I don't have that many yet, but I have I have a few different brands. So something that you can get started with is simply take your shoes off more often, walk barefoot more often. Um, initially, your feet might be sensitive, right? When I used to walk over like gravel or something, it would be really painful. So, you know, do baby steps, literally baby steps, but with the right guidance, um, you will create stronger feet and you will feel more balanced. You will feel more grounded and you feel younger in body, feet, eyes, and mind. And one more thing, I don't have a, I didn't have time to put this whole thing together, but these are actually socks that I'm literally wearing right now. And they are toe spacers and I have other toe spacers made from plastic, but this is really a great way to passively help spread your toes a little bit and create that with again that good solid foundation because if you've ever you know if you don't have toes it's like it's really hard to balance the toes are doing an important job and the wider they are the better they can help us balance than compared to these um squished together toes and mine after like almost 60 years of wearing traditional shoes didn't even actually wear much high heels in my life never liked high heels but of course i wore heels um, they definitely, my feet have, feet have definitely taken their toll and I wish I would have started this 40 years ago, 50 years ago, but today is always better than never. So let's move into the roll and relax. Uh, I will also have to move my computer over. We will do a relaxation practice, uh, like letting go of tension in the feet, and we will also strengthen our feet. And again, just a quick reminder that you might need a few small objects that would be helpful if you have something laying around. Again, um, you don't have to overthink it. So let me stop this and let me stop the screen show. Uh, let's stop this share here. All right. Uh, so we are back. 
Let me just close my keynote. And I want to see if there's any questions, but we will have time for questions at the end for sure. So definitely want to make sure that we are getting to the actual foot massage. And I just want to make sure I see the, let's see, where did my YouTube window go? Uh, I can't find my YouTube right now. I don't know if it's missing. Oh, there we go. Uh, I don't see any questions. How can we improve our balance with eyes closed? Asked Kimberly. Well, that's something where you just, you just, you have the balance really solid with eyes open and then you can slowly increase it. And again, we, I can do a whole separate session on yoga and how you can, you first, you've probably seen that if you balance, if you look at the ground, it's a lot easier. And then you move your attention up to the sky, it's getting harder and harder. And then you close your eyes. So you progressively improve those things. All right. I'm going to have to move my computer to my living room where we have, where I have set up my yoga mat. So let me just quickly move over here. This is all live. And let's see. I want to make sure I have my Zoom still. Where's my Zoom? Okay, here's my Zoom. <laughs> okay, so before we actually roll, just in case you have to get some supplies, um, let me just show a few things and then we will do the rolling together. Okay, let me plug in the power here. All right, so I wanted to just quickly say the balls I'm using are called yoga tuna balls. They come in a toe, two of them. You can use tennis balls. We will do one quick thing with both balls together and the tote, but then most of the things we're doing will be with just one ball. So if you only have one tennis ball, then that's okay. Um, what else did I wanna show? Oh yeah, just a few of the different toe spreaders. So these are the first ones I got. They're called yoga, yoga toes, I think. Those are really like, I couldn't only, I could leave them on for 15 seconds, uh, minutes, and that was it. They were, they're really extreme and you can't walk with them. And then I've got other ones called, um, these are called correct toes. So they go in between and they can, you can actually wear them in shoes. Um, and then these are awesome toes. So there's a bunch of different brands. I'm not affiliated with any of these brands, um, but these also, these are like, you can put them in shoes as well. And I just wanted to show a few more things with the shoes. So I used to wear a lot of flip-flops. The problem with flip-flops is you, your toes have to grip because there's no support. I had seriously plantar fasciitis. There's so much pain in my feet and that's all gone. And I also used to wear like these aspergillus. I think they are called aspergillus, but see how stiff the sole is so you can't really roll off. And how, again, when you look at feet, now I've got these shoes called Wild, the brand is called Wildlings and see how the, the shape, right? is much more foot shape than this. And what I, the, the barefoot shoes, you can, they're completely flexible. They're actually, you can completely move your feet. Another example is these sandals um, are actually, you know, they're pretty good. They have actually, they, they're not too stiff, right? But again, they have that arch support and they have that, you know, I always said my little toe was always hurting. I always got like little blisters on my little toe. And this is a brand here called High Fields. This is a German brand. They don't ship to the US, unfortunately, High Fields. So this is a sandal from High Fields. And, you know, obviously this is extremely thin and you can, Anya's reviews talks about all this. You can have different thicknesses. You, but you have these straps that you wrap around. They're really pretty and they're super flexible. So these are the shoes I'm wearing now. Instead of, you know, I actually got rid of all my old shoes. This is probably one of the few shoes that I have left that I, I, I threw all the other ones away or gave them away. And look at these cute rain boots <laughs> for the rain. So these are also from, this is a brand called Zero. It's, it's actually no, Zero, it's an X, um, X-E-R-O shoes. So these are rain boots. So anyway, they have literally all styles that you can imagine. And one more thing I wanted to show you. These are the wildling shoes. I've walked over, I've walked on like eight mile hikes over rocky terrain in Joshua Tree, over rocks, over cacti. These shoes are just, they're called honey bear. This one is, they, they don't have them anymore, but they're so cute. Or look at same brand, but look how cute these shoes are. So we've come a long way from these weird toe shoes <laughs> that I always thought looked really creepy. All right. And then, oh, last thing is like the little, um, these are little socks I have on, they come in different colors and I'm gonna take mine off now. So if you have a little trouble with balance, it might be good to do this near a wall that you can hold onto a wall, or you might wanna have a chair that you can um, hold onto. 
because when we brought the feet in my, I, I have a chair as well. It's just nice to, you know, but you're not, it's not really super scary to do what we're going to do. I'm just saying you might, you might like the support. Okay. I'm going to put my computer on the floor so that you can actually see my feet. So this is always a little bit of the part here. Let's see. Okay. So see, I have these socks on. Obviously, I'm going to take this off right now because we want to roll off our feet. And I have my little um, menu of what I wanted to do. So um, I know you can't see my face anymore, and it might be a little weird, but I don't have that camera set up. So let's just stand and connect to the ground. Take a few deep breaths, and maybe even close your eyes. And maybe sway just a little bit forward and back, a little side to side. And get a sense of where you feel that you are centered, that you're not leaning forward, not leaning backwards, not putting more weight on one foot or the other. And then come to a still position. And I like to think of a little mantra, like a little Sankalpa in yoga. My feet keep me grounded. My feet keep me balanced. All right, so let's start with simple toe lift. So what we wanna do, we wanna lift our toes and spread the toes, just spread the toes as far, I wish I had an overhead camera here, but you wanna lift and spread them and then set them down. So let's do that again. Lift up the toes and try not to lean super far backwards. You can always hold on to a chair if you need. Spread your toes as far as you can and let them drop down. Now, just lift the big toe. This is something I could not do at all when I first began this. I had no control, but we have individual muscles, especially the big toe has its own muscle and then drop. And now lift, and this is, I'm still, see my, you can see, maybe I need to move closer, but my second toe here, now lift the little ones. This one is, this guy is still like a little bit like a lazy eye. He doesn't really want to fully participate. So, and try not to do too much of this. So press into the ground with big toe and then just lift the little guys and set them down. And now we want to do a little bit of a, a draping, like where you just do, a, you start lifting the big toe and then the second one, and then the third one, and then you go all the way, all the toes are lifted, and then you start slowly setting down the little one, and slowly one by one, voila. So again, lifting the big one, second, and Again, I'm not saying I'm an expert at this, but I used to not be able to do this at all. I had no strength in my toes. Now, and see, by the way, when we talk about arches, so yeah, when you look at arches and you say, I have such a flat arch, just lift your toes and see how your arch lifts up. So if your toes can't move, of course you're gonna have a flat arch, right? So lifting your toes alone will really create that more that stronger arch. Okay, like I said, we're gonna start with a little bit of a double, like if you don't have these balls, you just have a tennis ball, that's okay. You can just roll on one ball, but it's nice. We just wanna do a little bit of a warm up, just rolling, kind of feel how your foot is cradled and massaged from both the outer, the lateral and the medial side. So it feels really good. Again, if you only have one ball, you can absolutely do this with one ball in the center of your foot. And then I'm gonna turn around, other side. Oops, other foot, I mean, not other side. <laughs> other foot, just rolling back and forth. And you can definitely put more pressure on these if you want, you can put more weight into that foot with the balls. So from the front. Again, we're not gonna spend a lot of time here. We're gonna do the majority of class with just one ball. Okay. Next one, let's, this is really what helped me get rid of my plantar fasciitis, the next two moves. So single ball, the yoga tuna balls, by the way, come in three colors. So they're not different balls. These are all the same balls, they're just different colors. 
and the proper one. This is a great way if you get these balls, they're pretty firm and it's a really great way to break them in is working with on the foot. So basically you put the ball right under the ball mount and you can, this is where maybe a chair or wall can be helpful. And you just go, you basically just rotate your feet called inversion, eversion. You're just going side to side like so. And go slow. This, if it's painful, you can totally barely put any pressure on the ball, right? You can, you can have all the weight on the standing foot and just do it very lightly. Or if you want more, you can put a lot of pressure on the foot. So you can really decide. All right, and usually I would switch to the other ball so they wear down evenly, but right now I'm just using the same one. So other foot, you are here at the ball, under the ball mount and you go from outside to inside like so. So the heel is on the ground and you're just moving from the outer, kind of the pinky toe side to the big toe side. All right. And you can always, if you watch this replay, you can go longer. You don't, you, I just want to show you several moves so you don't, you have a good like toolbox. So then this is like where the plantar fasciitis, right? It's like, I was, had so much pain in my feet and I used to sit under the desk with these wooden rollers, but they wouldn't really do anything because I wasn't actively really uh, relaxing and um, strengthening and lengthening these muscles. So you can definitely put the ball under your heel too, but I recommend just in front of the heel because that's usually where we have that most tender um, plantar fas fascia. So, and then you know, you just basically do the same thing. You kind of like from the back, it looks like you're just kind of scraping the balls if you're trying to get something rid of something under your foot. So you can go all the way side to side. So the, the big, the toes are gonna to be on the ground, but they will be moving a little bit, obviously. So let me show you from the front. Oops. So it's like, I'm just going side to side. So this feels really juicy and yummy. I'm gonna to switch to the other foot right now. And by the way, I have these balls in my bathroom. So when I brush my teeth, I just stand on these balls. It feels really good. You don't even have to move, just standing on the balls like this. Let me get my other one. So keep moving back side to side. But if you have, you know, you, you lean against the counter while you brush your teeth and you're just standing on these, it feels so nice. <laughs> All right. So side to side with the heel. Ah, oh, this is so nice. All right. Another thing, by the way, you can see on my own feet, I have a bunion on my left foot and I don't have one on my right foot. So this also happened from an injury with my big toe, but it makes, it creates a limited amount of extension in my toe. So when my right toe, I can do this and my left toe, I'm stopped here, right? So depending on your toes, um, this next thing that we're going to be doing, you might want to back off a little bit. So we're going to do some toe extensions and I'm going to start with my right side. So you want to get the ball mount as close as possible to the ball, but you might be doing this, right? You might be starting here. So what you don't want to be in severe pain. You just want, you want it to feel good. And think of your, your big toe and your middle toe, or your second toe, like a V. So from the top, you want to kind of spread these a little bit apart. So like this. And right now, this is just a passive stretch. And if you want to stretch a little more, you can lift your heel slowly. Oh, this is so nice. And again, my left on well, my left side, I don't have that same range of motion. And then we want to do the same for the middle. Right now, I have the three middle toes. I don't know if you can see that. So just stretching them here against the ball, spreading them a little bit. So depending on your feet and your foot size, they, the yoga tuna balls also come in a slightly bigger size called plus, that's more like the size of a tennis ball. So if you have really big feet, you might actually prefer the plus balls for this. So now we do the same thing. So I don't know if you can see, but I have the three middle toes on there and lifting. Ah, oh, feels so nice. 
And then for the little toe, you can use the toe tuna bar, but the little toe, if you want to do that by itself, I actually, you know, now that it's Halloween right now, <laughs> coming up, not now, but we have it coming up, you know, these little eyeballs are actually really perfect to just stretch the little guy, the pinky. But you can use the tuna ball too, but in that case, you would probably have the fourth and the fifth toe together. But I really like the these little balls for the for the pinky toe. Oh, my pinky toe is saying, I need this. I need this. All right, other foot. And now you will see my left. My left. Again, we want to spread. You want to create space between here. So put these on the ball. The three, my three smaller toes, the pinky and the fourth, the fourth and the third are kind of almost on the floor. And so the the big toe and the second toe are on the ball. And right now we're just doing this passive stretching. Take a deep breath. And you know, just you can also. Again, I have way limited mobility on here, this side, but I'm working on keeping this. Oh, another thing you want to do, especially if you have bunions. So think about this toe moving more that way, right? And because the bunions create this crookedness that the toe goes inward. So you definitely want to also guide that toe to be going to the, on my left foot, it would be going to the right side. All right, middle three. And I'm just going to start with the lifting right away. You don't have to do that. You can just lean. You can just also lean into that like so, like as if you were walking. And then for the little guy, I'm going to use my Halloween eyeball again. Whoops. Come on, balls. Don't run away. So just, yeah, sometimes just having that, helping with the hands, helping hands. So stretching the little guy. All right, we have four more things to do. Um, the next one is really good, especially if you have bunions too. So strengthening, and we can do this with all the toes, but right now we wanna focus on the big toes. So we did this where we just stretched, right? We just stretched this big toe. But now I want you to also push the toe into the ball, like really push it down. And again, try to push it down and away from the, so if you have a bunion, push it down and that way. So push, 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 push. And of course the other toes are helping because the ball is too big, but really focus and release. So inhale, I like to then exhale and then push that big toe down. Let me turn this way. Push it down as if you're trying to squish this ball down to the ground and release. One more time. Push, 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 push. All right, and then other side. So again, you want to push the toe down and to the medial side of the foot. So not to the other toes, but away from the other toes. Push it down, push it down and release. Push, 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 push. Press it down really hard, release. So this is flexion. And all right. And now, now we come to the fun stuff. <laughs> More or less, maybe you don't like it as because it might be more challenging. So now what we want to do is make fist and spread, right? Just what we do with our hands. So make a toe fist. Because if you're trying to pick up this ball, and we will be picking up things in the moment, but this ball is pretty big. And then spread your toes, just like we did in the beginning on the ground. So fist, I grab that ball and then spread your toes. Grab it and spread your toes. And you might notice that your fingers want to help, right? It's like in the brain, the digits are connected there. And then other side. So toe fist, squish, really squeeze that ball and then spread your toes up and far away from your leg. So you want to get them up and spreading them. Again, the toe spreaders are passively helping you spread, but you really need to do these strengthening things, exercises to really get your toes to spread more. And this is, again, I'm definitely, I started this journey at my late 50s. So if you started early, you will have much stronger feet than me. All right, and now this is the part where 
you might need to help have your hands help you. This is also where I start. I can definitely make improvements. So now we want to do what we did in the beginning, where we just lift the big toe on its own. So lift the big toe, just the big toe, and then put it down, and then just the little toes. So again, this is, you know, especially my, so you might want to help press that big toe down and then lift your little guys and maybe use your hand to really teach these toes. Come on, lift up. You, you're lifting them up actively, but you're also using your hand to help. So alternating big toe, little toes. Big toe alone, little toes. Okay, yeah. I, I'm definitely also could use a little more practice. So again, left side, like just the left toe. My left big toe feels a little more solid in this. And then little toes, big toe. And if you can't do this at all, trust me, I couldn't do it at all either. And I'm still not a master at this. Um, but this is something that goes, and that's what we lose when we put our shoes, when we bind our shoes in these tight shoes, um, our feet in these tight shoes. All right, so the finale, this is the fun stuff. Now I have a little bowl and I have a bunch of different objects here. This is some stuff from nature, some stuff, you know, from, from the house. And now what we're going to be doing, each foot is going to start. Let me see if you can see this. Maybe I need to move a little over here. Okay. So now we're just picking up stuff and putting it into are now this is a tricky this is a really flat little lego piece and i oh, did, got it other foot little pebble a pretty big rock this is a shell ah the shell is also like the lego piece kind of hard to grab yep today i'm struggling i got it done yesterday so it's okay make it fun Nope, that didn't work. Make it fun. Don't stress if something you can't pick something up right away. See, my left foot is there. You go. Now this shell. This is the last piece. Let me try my other foot on the shell. Ah, almost had it. Okay, the shell doesn't want to work today. Of course, when I'm doing it live, I can't do it, and otherwise, I can always do it. Okay, it's all right. I had a little help from my other foot. <laughs> Okay, so that actually before we end, so come back to your stance and just notice if you feel that you have more of a connection to the ground, that you have more of a sensation of your feet being on the mat, less being flighty kind of up in the air, floating above the ground and more like a, I almost feel like, like there's a magnet attaching me to the ground. I'm feeling really grounded now. All right, so let's see if there's any questions <laughs> on YouTube. And then before we have our Clear Vision Club internal, a little Q&A. Let me see if I can find the YouTube again here. Now I don't have my second monitor. Hello, everybody. Um, what's the name of the barefoot shoes? Oh, there is so many different kinds, um, Rosanna. Um, I have to, again, anyasreviews.com. Let me see if I can grab those links. Um, I would put some, let me see. I'm just gonna put one link in the YouTube chat here right now that is for Anya's reviews, like the best barefoot shoes. She has many, I mean, I just love her website. She's also on Instagram and Anya's review. I'm not affiliated with her. I just really, um, I actually haven't even talked to her. So I just love her content, super helpful in terms of education. And I also put the link for the yoga tuna balls in there. So. Um, but yeah, it's again, I'm not, I'm not the minimal shoe expert here, but I've definitely seen huge improvements in my feet. Um, I have no more pain in my feet. I have no more knee pain, no more Achilles pain. My hips feel much better, barely any pain in my lower back. I used to be, have excruciating pain in my lower back. So, I mean, I'm not saying that that alone, I'm also doing yoga and Pilates and other things, but it's, I think the key message here is that instead of wearing all these supportive crutches like orthotics or arch support in the shoes uh, or glasses or contacts, we have the ability in our bodies 
to actually improve naturally, but not if we have these crutches. And again, shoes, like glasses are like, you know, when once you understand this, you're like, why? Like you look at people's shoes, you're like, oh my God, like I used to wear the same shoes. And I just thought that's just, I just thought bunions were just like, you get older, you get bunions and plantar fasciitis. Yeah, you know, it's just normal that you get those kind of problems. Um, and, you know, let me see if there's any more questions in the YouTube. I hope you felt a little bit of a relief or you felt an improvement um, with the roll and relax. And again, the picking up the objects and the more you do barefoot stuff, like again, the shell, <laughs> the shell, I can usually pick it up today. It didn't work, but it's make it fun. Um, you know, think of a baby or a child, the beginner's mind and not be like, I'm a perfectionist. I have to get all this sorted out. Um, I know some yoga teachers, they can lift each toe separate. And um, I, I, I'm i glad to do the big one and the little ones, but even that is, is an ability that we have, we have a separate muscle for the big toe. Like, so we have, I forgot how many muscles, we have a lot of muscles and little bones in our feet. And the more we support these and the more we strengthen them, not support them, but the more flexible our feet can be, you will, all the pain that we have uptown, right? Think of the foundation, the feet are the foundation. If there's issues in the foundation, you know, the sec the first floor, the second floor, the third floor will all have front problems. So it's like with buildings, we get it. But when it comes to our bodies, we somehow ignore this. Anyway, enough of the, the preaching. Um, I'm super excited. Next week, we're going to have Trisha Kirby talk about the earth element and grounding. So we're going to have our third episode on the topic of grounding. And, um, and I'm definitely going to invite a, a movement specialist or a barefoot specialist to the show so that we can get even deeper into this topic because I'm super passionate about it. And if you're interested in learning from me, I have a free guide that you can download. You can subscribe to this channel. I have a 21 days to better eyesight experience program. That's a great way to get started. And that program actually includes, now my balls are on the floor, but it includes rolling out some more things for the feet. It includes um, massage for the neck, for the belly, for the whole body. And it includes obviously vision practices. That's a really great program to get started. It's low investment of time, energy, and money. All the links are underneath in my YouTube um, video. So comment with any questions. I reply to all the YouTube comments and I see you guys on YouTube next week.